Welcome back to JRG Guitars. Up today is episode two in the hollow body build that I have going from a guitar from thefretwire.com. In episode one, we unboxed the guitar, saw what we had, took a look at the components, dry fit that neck just to see if our scale length looked good and if we had any tilt or angle or anything that needed to be adjusted. And today, we're gonna take that neck and we're gonna take care of the fret sprout of those frets poking out the side of the fretboard. We're gonna then go ahead and level the neck itself we're going to level and polish and clean up the fret ends and we'll get this thing to a point where we can go ahead with the next step in our process. Uh, so thank you very much for tuning back into JRG Guitars. Here it comes right at you. Well I started out by configuring my workbench so I could set up a nice block to be able to have a stable surface to work on the neck. Now this particular neck has a really large heel joint there so I boosted it up with a couple of two by fours just so I could get to it and then I can get my leveling beam on there and go down and take a look looking for a small gap there and then I could adjust the truss rod and I went back and forth a few times until I got to the point where I did not see any gap in between there at all and that ensured me that the fretboard was completely level then I took a little wood block here and just tapped it very lightly and knocked off that nut, came out pretty clean, and now I'm ready to go for all of my work. So I take this uh, block of wood that has a little file that's angled on the edge of it, and I can run it down the side and just knock down those little frets pieces that are poking out uh, that fret sprout that I can keep it from uh, rubbing on the bottom of your hand when you play. Then I go through with a sharpie and put a black line on top of all the frets so I can then come by with my leveling beam and just knock everything down to where I get rid of that sharpie line on all the frets and therefore I verify that those frets are now really nice and level all the way across uh, but they're flatted so I'll have to do some crowning to clean those up. So to protect the fretboard I come by with some masking tape and I mask off all of the wood portion uh, just leaving the frets there so I can access them with my files. So what I'm doing here is just setting up to make a fall away on the 12th fret on up. So I put some tape over the 12th fret and over my uh, fret leveling beam and then as I sand this one area the fret leveling beam is now sitting at just a slight angle and it creates just a slight increased file down on those upper frets because this is a non-adjustable area by the truss rod. So this is a new file that I got. It's a Stumac Z file and it's very interesting. It has a angled uh, crown in there that as you go it cuts away one side of the fret and then when you flip it over it cuts away the other side even more and it automatically leaves a nice little thin sharpie line on the top guaranteeing you that you have not knocked away that top portion and just rounded off the other edges. It works great and it's much faster and uh, more precise than the other files I had used in the past. This one uh, really made this job really fast. Now I'm coming by with my fret rocker and what I do is I just span the uh, course of three frets here and verify that that thing lays completely flat. If it teeter totters it tells me I have a high fret in the middle. So I'm coming by here because it was just a little high on one portion and filing it down just to knock it down then come by with the fret rocker verify that it is now completely level with the adjacent frets come by with my crowning tool recrown it and now that fret is good to go. I then go through the remainder of the fretboard and kind of rinse and repeat, if you will, and just verify that all the frets are level with the adjacent one, making any adjustments that might be needed along the way, and just verify now that all the frets are shaped precisely where I want, and then we can move on to the next step. All right, so in my excitement to get going, after I cleaned up the edges with my file to get rid of the fret sprout, I taped everything up because I was so hungry to get going and I really should have dressed the ends before putting the tape on so I can really get in there. So I just peeled the tape back on one side I'm going to hit them with my end files and then uh, put the tape back and I'll flip it around and do the other side. 
So here I do go back with my safe file that has a rounded edge on one side so I can run it up against the corner of the fretboard there and not mark it up at all. And just clean up those to get them really, really precise so they're nice and smooth. Uh, and it does take some time, but the results are quite nice. So here I come by with some steel wool first. I'm trying to knock down now all of the tool marks and any visible scratches. This is the steel wool and you can see it shined it up on these first two. These are much more dingy. You can still see that faint sharpie line on the top. So this got it in a fairly good spot although there's still tool marks on there. So now coming by with a micro mesh pad just to see if I can knock down what the steel wool could not get to. After that, I come by with my fret erasers and I ran through all of the grits of my fret erasers to see what kind of shine I could get. So I will use steel wool and micro mesh pads to get the tool marks out. Then we'll switch to fret erasers to just get these things. But that is one beautiful fret right there. The fret work is complete, minus my final buff that I'll do once the guitar is on and set in and all of that uh, I want to save any little imperfections that crop up for me to be able to address uh, before I do my final buffing. Well there it is for this one so the fretboard now is in a good place where we can move on with the rest of our finishing process. Those frets look nice, they're leveled, they're crowned, the fret ends feel great along your hand. I'll save that final buffing for when we put the whole guitar together because as we move around we'll probably have a little scuff here and there on the frets and that way that final buff will help polish and clean everything else out. So if you enjoyed this video and you like this type of content, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and then hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell icon notification so you'll be notified the next time a video is coming out for you. So thank you much for tuning back in and thank you for staying here to the end of the video. I certainly do appreciate it. We will see you next time from JRG Guitars. JRG Guitars!